right. Questions for me? Questions on page 67. Oh, gee, I don't like that. All right, so on. Uh, so if you read the the above, it says we wish to determine the average income of all criminal law attorneys in in Colorado. Of course, this is fictitious data, so just go with it. We randomly sample 500 attorneys from an attorney database kept by the state government. These are 500 attorneys. We calculate the average salary as 42,000 with uh, per year with a standard deviation 14,000. So, I mean, I think we're all pretty safe to say that lawyers probably aren't making 42,000 on average, but we'll just go with it. So, is there a population average that's given? No. No. So, number one's no, there's not one, NA or something like that. Sample mean is the 42,000 which they had given. There's not a population standard deviation, that's net NA. Number four, the sample the sample standard deviation is 14,000, that's given. And then write out our inferential goal. Our 500 attorneys should be representative of the sample of all attorneys. That's what we're hoping for. You know, something in that context that doesn't have to be the exact wording. Please use your words. I'm not looking for fancy. So we're hoping that the 500 people that are surveyed are representative of everybody, but something in that thing. And are there red flags? Um, yeah. If we're trying to say this is true for all attorneys nationwide or worldwide, we just took, yeah, we just took Colorado. So that, that could be a flag to, to be worried about, okay? And also public for Hey, Josh, did you have homework done? Yeah. So um, then we go down to, is there any questions on one through six? You feel okay about that? Pretty simple, straightforward. All right, uh, the second set, it talks about IQ test, tests are written and scored in such a way that a mean is universally 100 with standard deviation of 15. A group of 1,000 psychology students at Northern Colorado, <coughs> excuse me, take an IQ test. The mean of this group is 104. And standard deviation is 30. So the population mean is um, 100. Sample mean, the sample means 104. Um, the population standard deviation is 15. That's given from above. Sample standard deviation is 30. Um, and they're hoping the 1,000 people that were chosen uh, represent everybody. Is there a red flag? Yeah, we're at uh, Northern Colorado University. Okay, so that's kind of the ins and outs of how you would look at that. Um, the writing should tell you how to go through. But I am now on page five of the notes. Okay, so that packet should have page five on it as well. Um, there's... There's kind of a lot in here. I don't know if I'm going to get all the way done with it, which could convey into tomorrow, which is fine. Um, so, they go back and they start talking about IQ tests. You have a population mean. You have a population standard deviation. Um, if you were to select 100 people at random with an average IQ, uh, so there's some things. Sampling variability. This is if... So if I were to if I were to sample 100 people and test an IQ, and let's say I get from that sample I get a mean and a standard deviation. If I go through the same test again and select another 100 random people, and it doesn't you know worldwide or whatever, we could get a slightly different mean and standard deviation. If I selected another and another and I kept doing it. Every time I select 100 people, and if I ran, run through my data, it's very possible I'm going to be getting a different mean and a different standard deviation each time I do it. Okay, so that's sampling variability. Okay, there's 
you know, sometimes they you heard a term called wiggle room. That could be like kind of a wiggle room thought. Okay. Um, so this is four paragraphs down. It says, assume that Mr. Psychi psychologist finds a random sample of 100 people and measures their IQs. Assuming the average of the sample is 102.2, standard deviation is 15.4. The sampling differs from the parameters that had come from above, saying there was a population mean of 100, a population standard deviation of 15, so it's slightly different. This is sampling variability. Okay, it changes up a little bit. Okay, and then it talks that the person did the same thing and they had a sample of 99.3 with a 15.2 standard deviation. Does it again, finds 101.9, standard deviation of 13.9. So what's basically happening as far as the normal <clears throat> curve goes, the average is moving. And the standard deviations are moving. Okay, they adjust a little bit um, because there's variability in, you know, group to group to group. Not that we're not doing things, trying to do it the exact same, but sometimes things will happen. Um, so we're going to introduce the mu x bar and the standard deviation x bar. Okay, so this is the mean of all sample means. So if we had run a test, gathered 100 people, got their standard deviation and their average and their mean, um, and then we did it again, did it again, did it again, did it again, we're going to be able to get an average. And the average is going to take us closer and closer and closer to what it probably really is for the entire population. Um, this is the standard deviation. And one thing to please note, you can't really see this bar on the notes, so make sure that you realize that's in place. So standard deviation of all sample means. So there's, a, there's ways that we can go through and do this. Go over. So as we stated, the population of IQ is 100. Uh, a wonderful coincidence is that the mean of all random samples of any fixed sample size n will be 100. In general, the mean of a sampling distribution is equal to the mean of the population. Okay, so that could be a huge coincidence. It could take place. Um, it's not true for standard deviations. Individual people vary. From the mean, this is the variability described by standard deviation of 15. Yet groups of people are less likely to form and form the overall mean. Intuitively, it makes sense that a poll of a thousand people will produce more accurate results than a poll of 10. Okay, small sample sizes are less accurate, uh, more unpredictable, and more likely to deviate from the true parameter. Okay, so what that basically means is let let's say I took a Let's say I went to Stanford and took an IQ test at Stanford, but I only selected 10 Stanford students. Okay, we might have picked the brightest at Stanford, the brightest of the bright, because you know it's tough to get into Stanford. 10's a really bad sample. So a lot of times you want to look, what's the sample? How many were part of the sample? This means something to us. Uh, larger <coughs> sample sizes are more likely to produce a mean that's closer to what the population mean would be. And that's important to know. And then they talk about an equation that looks like this. Okay, so this is um, the sample standard deviation where n is the number of people. Okay, now as n gets larger, think about what would happen. What happens when my denominator starts getting larger? Like, let's say this is a 10 on top, and I had square root of 100, which is 10. 10 over 10 is 1. But if this is still 10 on top, top and this is 10,000, then I have 10 over um, 100 which is 1 out of 10. So 
this is going to change based on our sample distribution. And, uh, and that's kind of a key thing to understand that the more and more and more you gather, the more and more likely it is that it does apply to all or the entire population. Okay, but again, we're trying to take a sample. One of the big shortfalls in doing statistics, doing a really good statistical analysis test, is it costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of manpower. And there's times that errors can take place. How many of you have gotten on your phone a call and it's a survey? What do you do when it happens? Hang up, right? Yeah, well, well, it depends upon what time of year it is for me. If it's during the summer and I got time, I'm I, I'm real critical. I'm real critical when it comes to it. Well, I sit there and you know, with like, are you extremely more likely, somewhat more likely, almost more likely, more likely, less likely, somewhat less likely, more accurately unlikely? And it's like, what? I don't even know what that means. So I always, I always give, give them a hard time, and uh, the last one that came my way was a political poll, which I had a lot of fun with. So, um, so again, as you see from the formula, as n rises, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution falls, so it gets smaller and smaller as you get more and more uh, for, for your sample. This formula reinforces the idea that larger sample sizes are less likely to vary and more likely to be accurately reflect their attributes. In this case, the sample mean of the overall population. Uh, note, oh, Ms. Ranishing used a big word. A note about semantics. Semantics. Since we have two different standard deviations presented here, statisticians often refer to the standard devi deviation of the sampling distribution, the standard error. Therefore, uh, sa sample standard deviation over root n is referred to the standard error of the mean. So standard error of the mean goes along with still the sampling standard distribution. Um, so they do have a couple of uh, bell curves or normal curves. So they tell us that they know that the population, average women are 65 inches in height, standard deviation of 3.5. And yes, these standard deviations could continue to go up further and further. Um, so you basically add or subtract from the mean. Okay. What is the mean and standard deviation of a possible group of 80 American women? So what we have to do here is we're going to say, okay, I know the standard deviation is 3.5, but then we're going to go root 80. Okay. Does someone have a calculator to do this for me real quickly? Three point five divided by root eighty. This comes out to point three nine. Thank you. Okay. So that means something to us. That Basically, when we look at it, again, if you look at it, it says, in particular, the standard deviation of the sample and distribution with sample size n is quantified by the following formula. And that's basically what we just did. It says, therefore, this using this is referred to as the standard error of the mean. Okay? So let's hold on to that for a sec, see what it's going to progress into. It says, find the probability that a single random American woman is taller than 67 <coughs> inches. Okay? Show the bell curve calcula calculator recommended. So now we're looking at 67 inches. Okay? We want to find the probability, which the probability is the area here. So what did we learn about last semester that we could do on the calculator that finds us the area? Oh, is it taller? Oh, okay, thank you. I'm glad you guys can read. So we're talking here. So how did we go about doing that? Do we recall? Normal CDF. Yeah, it's the normal CDF. Um, so if you plug this into your calculator, things that you should note 
when we look at it, we want to the right. Okay, so to the right means something different. I'm going to open up the calculator. Hey, and I finally got the, the license, so I don't have the free version any longer. What is that? What is that? What is what? Oh, now I don't have to. Because when you you get the trial, I think it's like 100 days or something. Now it doesn't ask me. All right, so clear. Uh, let's see. We're going to go second distribution, normal CDF. Okay, so normal CDF. Let's see. It was the mean goes first. Uh, second VARs. So the first thing we plug in on normal CDF is the mean. And then you go comma. And then you do the standard deviation of 3.5. And then we want 67 comma like a thousand. Or yeah, a thousand should be fine. I think that's it. So you're talking about you know, a 2.45% of the women are taller than, you know. So the probability that somebody was taller than 67 is, you know, 2.5%. Small, okay? Now, again, this could be just made of information. We're not, don't need to... To debate this is what is the probability a random sample of 36 American women produces an average height greater than 67? Okay, so if we're saying that this is uh, 0.025 rounded, oops, 0.025 rounded. If we were to just take that 36 and say let's multiply, if we had 36 people, am I right there? 36. Did I plug it in right? 0 0.025. So, gosh, 0.9%. I think I did something wrong on that one. Okay. So, but that's, oh, I know what I did wrong. Oh, I'm such a dumb, dumb, dumb. Let me go back here. So, if we did standard deviation of 3.5 over root 36, whatever this comes out to would be more closely to our probability. So 3.5 uh, out of 6. So we're talking that we're in a 58% category that this could take place. Find the probability that you sample 400 Americans did the same thing. So again, we can go to 3.5 divided by the square root of 400. So this is close. This is getting closer. This is getting closer to what the average is, or getting closer to the probability of what happened. Okay, so those are just a few things to do. And I actually I'm surprised that I made it all the way through this. So a lot of homework or a little homework? A little. And please realize we are skipping 5-2, and we're doing, going to 5-3. So let's take a look at, let's see, I'm going to just double check what this looks like. 5-3. And what do we say we do uh, page 69 and we'll worry about problems one through three and problem number three has a B and C on it okay wow sounds good good enough I didn't go as long today as I did yesterday <laughs>